Who would think the Trish Regan would be covering Diddy so much, right? But we got a business story, ladies and gentlemen. We got 50 cents moving in on the Diddy empire. The walls are closing in around Puff Daddy and Sean Combs. I'm telling you, the feds are onto something. I think some more people are going to start talking. I've got major details to tell you about. Plus, MSNBC is suddenly in crisis mode. They don't know what to do with themselves. They can't understand. They can't believe this new poll from the Wall Street Journal. Wait until you see it. It's exactly what I've been predicting all along. And I'm telling you, Donald Trump's doing even better than this poll predicts. Okay, Disney just voted against against, ladies and gentlemen, wokeness, what that means for the stock price going forward. We will discuss, forgive me, what am I saying? They voted against anti-woke. That's what I meant to say. They voted against Nelson Peltz. Fools. <laughs> we'll discuss. And Lauren Boebert, she's been hospitalized for a rare disease. I have some details on her surgery and the condition. Our hearts go out to her right now. Welcome, everyone. Good to have you here. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, to my my own newsletter, both at trishreganmedia.com and at 76research.com. I have a lot more to say on 76 coming up, especially as it relates to Disney. And uh, make sure, again, I can't reiterate this enough, subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up, like, share, comment, all that good stuff. We are live. I see your comments coming in. I'm going to get to you in just a minute. But we got a show to do. Wow, 50 Cent taking direct aim at Diddy's empire. And it's a big empire. I mean, this is a guy who's built up, according to Forbes in 2023, at least a billion dollars. He's got a $100 million in loans out and mortgages for his real estate. But uh, his real estate empire is something. His clothing empire is something. And certainly his music empire is something. But he's suddenly in a whole lot of trouble. Oh, alcohol brands as well. Here's one that he's got quite an interest in that it seems 50 Cent would like to have a thing or two to do with. <laughs> he wrote just a few hours ago, good morning, people. Start the day off with positive energy and make what your heart desires happen. And he shared a headline from a publication that said, Sirak Vodka wants 50 cent to replace Diddy as brand leader. Okay, so this particular brand has uh, the other guy, Sean Combs, pushing their brand. And, and, you know, he sees an opportunity here. He's an opportunity. You know, he, he can't stand. Can, can I like highlight that, underline that? 50 Cent can't stand Diddy. I mean, it's so bad. We don't have to rehash this. You can watch it from last week. But I mean, it gets ugly, right? Because in the newest lawsuit, 50 Cent's ex-girlfriend, the mother of his child, is alleged to have had something going with Diddy that he was paying her for. I'll leave it there. You can go watch the rest. But you, you get my drift, right? So in other words, he really, really dislikes this guy. I mean, she took up with the enemy, so to speak. He had a few tweets about that one, too. Anyway, he's like, man, you know, you're going down. I, he had some interesting tweets on the heels of this tape. I'm telling you guys, part of the reason this is going to be a big problem is because what I'm going to show you next, which is some Bieber stuff. But let's first watch the feds closing in. Take a look at this video because they were just swarming in on his house and it was wild. I mean, this was a raid, all captured on live television. Look at the size of that house, would you? I mean, that's just incredible, right? <laughs> that's like, wow, that is a huge house. Um, but he's got one in Miami. He's got one out in California. So they did this bi-coastal raid and they swarmed it. I mean, look at those teams. Look at those teams. And the suns were carried out. Wow. I mean, this was extraordinary. And we're still sitting here going... When's the arrest coming? Is it coming? Is anything happening? Anything at all? And just exactly where are they going to get him on? So according to Rodney Strong, who sued Diddy about mm, maybe three weeks before this all went down, there are cameras in that huge house, like everywhere. And so because of that, one has to wonder where the Fed's getting kind of freaked out because he had these wild raging parties, allegedly, where all kinds of things were allegedly done. 
And as a result of that, well, with important people in attendance, et cetera, you, you kind of wonder where the Fed's like, whoa, we better get in there before somebody else does. And then they just went in and, and then we're all sitting here going, well, where's the arrest? Where's the arrest? Where's the arrest? Thank you very much. Did you guys just need to get your tape and get out? Or is anything else coming about? We do know that Ashton Kusher, you know, the other Hollywood star guy that's married to Mila Kunis and used to have a show at MTV Studios that was down the hall from where Diddy's show was taped called Punked. Well, Ashton has reportedly told a lot of publications he's anticipating that he will be subpoenaed like any minute now. So he's kind of fearful of getting drawn into this whole thing. His wife is like, do not talk to Diddy. Do not talk to him. I wonder what they're feel fearful about. Well, I mean, could it have anything to do with the new Bieber tape? Well, before we see the new Bieber tape, we got to see the original. Okay, so this is kind of sad. It actually... My heart like breaks when I see this. I can tell you, I do not like seeing this. This is a young kid, a young Justin Bieber, just a young teenager. And somehow he was sent to stay some weekend with Diddy. And well, I'll just let you see this and, and think about it. Think about what you know now. Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed to Usher. I'm signed to Usher. I, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, yeah, and, we, and we gonna go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. It's just, it's, it's hard to see that, right? I mean, I mean, given what we all know now about the way he partied, and by the way, Usher was on with Howard Stern and Howard Stern being Howard Stern got kind of graphic and Usher's like, well, you know, yeah, I kind of did see a lot and I did see a lot and I was like comprehended what I saw because I was a 13 year old kid. And they're like, Robin was like, well, what about your parents? Didn't they? He's like, ah, oh, my parents didn't understand. They didn't know. So he was exposed to something. I mean, a lot of people were exposed to various things and you've got to wonder why they're not coming forward. And will they have to come forward now? There's a brand new tape that's going kind of viral that I don't know as you've seen yet. I want to show this to you because it is helpful to understand and put in context. I mean, you saw Justin Bieber, right, as a young kid. And then there's this tape from like three years ago. And if you see it now, you're like, what the heck is Diddy doing? And now I think, I think, think he might have been patting him down, maybe looking for a wire or something. It kind of shows you how paranoid did he likely had become, and maybe rightly so, because, you know, when you got cameras everywhere and you're worried about the feds busting you, as they did, well, maybe that's why he was patting him down. And then he whispers something, and we can't make that one out. Anyway, tell me what you think. Patting him down, looking for a wire. I mean, is it a hug or is he whispering? It looks like he said something. And then Justin Bieber, by the way, looks absolutely terrible now. I mean, I'm glad he found God. I, they, I am very glad, actually. This is, this is one where, you know, God um, is an important force in, in a lot of people's lives, myself and myself included. But, you know, when you see somebody that maybe was exposed to some possibly, I mean, we don't know, this is all alleged, some pretty bad stuff. And you, you realize that they're able to come out on the other side in a positive way. His wife, of course, is very religious. He's become very religious. And that is so good. But Justin Bieber getting patted down. I mean, that's what that looks like to me. By Diddy, perhaps speaking again to the paranoia that Diddy felt. And then you just have to say, well, what was, what was the whispering about? And did he think, for example, that Bieber was onto him or that was going to have the feds after him for anything that may have happened before? Let's not forget 
The raid happened because of allegations of trafficking, human trafficking. We're talking underage trafficking, Homeland Security being in, but we're glad the Homeland Security gets a chance to actually go after someone. But let's see what happens, right? Don't count your chickens before they hatch. And again, these are just all allegations. But you see that video and you start to say, well, what the heck is going on? I mean, why hasn't anybody come out and told us exactly what transpired? Uh, Usher's the closest we've got. Why isn't Bieber speaking out? Why isn't Ashton Kutcher telling us what he knows? Why isn't anybody saying anything? What about J-Lo? I love J-Lo. You know what? I love J-Lo. I love her movies. I'm a big romantic comedy fan. Mm -hmm. Where is she? Well, I'm not the only one asking this question. You're not the only one. The Root is even asking this question. So this is interesting. From J-Lo to Justin Bieber, Lil Kim and Fat Joe, why aren't Diddy's famous friends speaking up? Ashton Kutcher allegedly is afraid he'll become part of the investigation against the hip-hop star. So all these enablers are frightened. Justin Bieber is frightened? J-Lo? I'm sorry. You know what? You're a big deal, girl. Lil Kim, you are too. Fat Joe, the rest of you. It's time to actually come clean if there's anything to come clean about. In other words, people have to do the right thing. And given that I don't know the scope of what may have gone down, and I've only heard what has been rumored, but it's obviously really concerning, people need to come forward. His ex-wife did within 24 hours. What do you know? Cassie got a deal. <laughs> like, a deal. Because that suit, well, let's just say, that was not going to be too pretty. Not pretty at all. And I read the Rodney story strong suit and that's pretty it's pretty awful i mean this is gross this is terrible 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 stuff and and if you got underage kids in there as it has been alleged and you got all the other stuff as well i'm sorry like this guy's gonna wind up going to jail and i think diddy put it a different way and he's ready he's ready he's ready willing and able to step in so everybody know that diddy's ready to take over the empire Forgive me, 50 Cent. What am I doing? <laughs> it's only Wednesday. Anyway, 50 Cent is ready to take over the Diddy Empire if he goes away for good. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I want to turn to another big story right now. Somebody else that may be taking over for Joe Biden. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if Joe Biden's going to go to the big house, but <laughs> I know a lot of people think he should. But anyway, Donald Trump. It's got to be feeling pretty good because it's like no matter what they throw at him, he is Teflon Don and it's like it just springs back and sticks to them, right? Like glue. It's amazing. Even when they got so upset about what he was saying about how there would be this bloodbath, he managed to make lemonade out of that one. Wait till you see this. But first, these are incredible poll numbers. The Wall Street Journal coming out with a brand new poll showing Donald Trump is leading Joe Biden in six out of seven swing states. Take a look at this incumbent trails in most battlegrounds that decided 2016 and 2020 elections. So this is really good news for the 45th president of the United States, hoping to become number 47. Let's go deep into these polls and take a look at what we find. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Arizona, Trump 39 percent, Biden 34 other, 6%, undecided, 9 Let's go over to Georgia. Wow, again, big, big numbers for Donald Trump. Michigan, even larger. I mean, you see him moving ahead, moving ahead. The dark purple is the latest poll. Look at North Carolina. This is really incredible. I mean, just fantastic. Nevada, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So he's got six out of seven, what do you know? I mean, he may just win this thing. I predicted it in 2016. I think I'm, I mean, it, it's hard to predict this early on. It really is. So I have to be careful here. But what I will tell you is this. Those poll numbers aren't even, aren't even as good as they could be. And the reason they're not as good as they could be is that people are still hesitant. They're still fearful. I mean, you get the mainstream media and the view and everybody telling you every single day, you are a bad person. You get the president of the United States telling you you're a bad person. 
if you're a conservative, if you're a MAGA Republican, which you'd have to be if this is going to be the nominee for the Republican Party, which he is, that makes you a MAGA conservative. So half the country, well, they're just bad people, right? If you listen to the media, if you listen to the White House. And so as a result of that, as a result of the cancel culture on steroids that we live in, people don't want to come out and say it. And then when you go knee deep into the polls, and you look at numbers like the economy, and you look at numbers like the border, and you look at, for example, what you, you see on, on policy issues, you know what you find? You find over and over again that people are wildly more in favor of Donald Trump. I mean, they score him 20 points higher on the economy. They score him 30 points higher on the border. And other words, when it comes down to the issues that people really care about right now, and trust me, they care about these things, crime. They say Donald Trump handled it better. And then when they say, well, who are you going to vote for? Suddenly those spreads narrow and they're like, oh, because they don't want to say, they don't want to tell you. I mean, that's a sad state we're in, but there's an intimidation factor, a big intimidation factor. And I actually think it's going to cause people to come out like you've never seen before for Donald Trump. They may not be telling the pollsters that, but it's what they intend to do. And there are a bunch of examples, but I think it's important to, to show you how hysterical this has made the mainstream media. I mean, MSNBC, which, gosh darn it, I mean, it's just, it's just nauseating. They don't even pretend, right? They don't, they don't even pretend to have any kind of semblance of not being biased. So they got these numbers, which came out late last night. And so there they were, 6 a.m., bright and early, trying to digest it all. And uh, let's just say, <laughs> it's like crisis time in the halls of 30 Rock. Let's watch. Trump neck and neck in every swing state. According to the new numbers from the Wall Street Journal, Trump leads Biden in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, North Carolina, Nevada, and Pennsylvania by figures that are all within the polls margin of error. In Wisconsin, the survey shows the two candidates tied at 46% each. The poll also finds negative perceptions about the economy remain a problem for Biden. 63% of swing state voters say the U.S. economy overall is not so good or poor condition, while 36% say it's in excellent or good condition. But when asked to rate the economic conditions in their own states, the majority of voters in five of those seven swing states say it's in excellent or good shape. Joining us now, CEO of the Messina Group, Jim Messina. He served as White House Deputy Chief of Staff to President Obama and ran his 2012 re-election campaign. Uh, Jim, as we always say, these are snapshots. The two things that I'm looking at right now, uh, obviously, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, uh, so critical. They're all very close. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised by, again, I would never guess this five years ago, that Joe Biden continues to perform best in Wisconsin. That Wisconsin of all states seems to be a uh, state. Older white guys actually uh, aren't thrilled with what, what, what's happening uh, with Donald Trump. Georgia, um, uh, tighter. Okay, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's almost like a funeral. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I mean, have you ever seen their faces so long and down and out? And did you hear one of the things that the, the, the female host, Mika Brzezinski, said about those economy numbers? This was very interesting. She went to the graphic where it showed what people thought about how they individually were doing, right? They, they talked about the national economy and how they felt, and, and those numbers were pretty dismal. 63% of the people in America say the economy's not in a good spot and they blame Joe Biden and then only 36% feel like it's okay. Well, then she, she segregated it out and she said, but when you ask them about their individual situation, they're like, oh yeah, I'm doing fine. So it's almost like she's saying, how dare you? How dare you suggest that the economy's not doing great because you know what, you're doing fine. <laughs> maybe, maybe people are just kind of optimistic. I don't know. Maybe they're like, yeah, you know what? I'm making it work. I'm getting by. But overall, it kind of feels like a drag. I told you it would be. Did I not say that this would be Carter 2.0? Really? And like everything I can think about with the 70s, I was born in the 70s. 
I was a little kid in the 70s and like there's every, there's like a grainy image, right? And it's not just my memory. The 80s feels kind of fun and happy and bright. Reagan was in charge then. <laughs> we, we had Jimmy Carter in the 70s and it just felt dismal. And now it feels even more dismal. And that's all thanks to Joe Biden, who's just a downer in every way, shape, and form. And now poor Joe Biden, well, he's stumbling as a downer, and one doesn't even know if he's going to be able to make it, shall we say, to November. So when I say that I think Donald Trump is in really good shape, I do think he's in really good shape. I mean, there's some things that they have to do, and Lara Trump is all over this. There are some things that they have to do to clean things up up and to make sure that this is a fair fight. And I have full confidence in her. She's done this amazing fundraiser. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but she's got a lot on her plate. And I think between her ability to drill down on some of those issues and her team's ability, frankly, to do that, as well as Donald Trump's charisma and just, well, the pure bad darn luck of Joe Biden, you're looking at a very positive November. The question is, can you get the rest, right? You want to get the rest. You need to get the rest. And that's what my friends over at American for Prosperity are trying to do. Americansforprosperity.org. This is a team of people that I know very well, and they're really smart, and they want to make sure that if Donald Trump wins this thing and they want him to win this thing, we need a Republican in the White House, that we get Republicans everywhere, that we get conservatives that care about having limited government in the spirit of live free or die, New Hampshire, where I grew up. You want that limited government. You want low taxes. You want to encourage people to be able to do for themselves and get all the red tape out of the way. So in fact, they can, they need that freedom to prosper. You want to have a secure, safe country. You want to have a border. You want to have low taxes. You want to onshore more money from overseas and not send all these American companies abroad. You want to encourage small business. I mean, all of these things that are so important. So they're working hard. I just want to give them a plug. Americansforprosperity.org. If you get a chance, check them out. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful group. Okay, everyone. So we've got a lot going on. And Donald Trump is smart because... <laughs> They may be doing their shindigs at Radio City Music Hall and raising 25 or $26 million in doing so. But you know what? Donald Trump's doing these rallies and he's going out and he's doing the funeral and he's going to the wakes and he's talking to police officers and he's talking to border officers and all the people that are concerned about things like law and order and they're responding. I mean, consider this. Do we have, Drew, the video of the police union's largest police union in the country in Michigan actually saying, you know what? You're our guy. They came out. This is a big deal. I can't stress this enough in the state of Michigan, largest police union. And they endorsed Donald J. Trump for 47th president of the United States. Take a peek. Today on behalf of 12,000 law enforcement people that the police officers association of Michigan represent, we want you to accept our endorsement for President of the United States. Consider that. Consider that. And yet the media is like, oh my gosh, how can it be? Well, I'll tell you, it's not that hard. You guys wanted to defund those people. You wanted to put them out of work. And Trump's like, you know what? They need jobs and they need pay raises and they need retirement plans and they need the whole nine yards because, you know, we need them. We're not going to have a safe society without them. So the largest police union, they are endorsing the guy with 91 counts against him with four criminal trials. Take that, Letitia. Okay? Consider the irony of that, ladies and gentlemen. Amazing. I mean, he just keeps flipping the script and flipping the script and flipping the script. Bloodbath. They thought they had him on that. You know, recently he did a rally and he mentioned that it was going to be a bloodbath. He was actually talking about auto workers and their jobs and how if China had any intention of putting in a, a factory in Mexico as opposed to the U.S., well, then he was going to tear off the heck out of the thing. It was going to be a bloodbath. And so then people took that word. I know how this goes. Hey, like I, I've dealt with it myself. I've been a victim of it myself. So, you know, I'm strong. He's strong. <laughs> and he comes out the other side and he basically turns it on its head. Do we have the video of him at the rally just last night, Drew, talking about the bloodbath? Because if we do, I, I want you guys to see this. 
and then and then we can go and take a look at the new website that he came out with but he he's making it work for him making it work okay maybe we'll get to that in a second let's go to the video first so i rather the video i want to go to actually the the screenshots i think we have that right because he's got oh this is just great he actually took it and he started a new website called bidenbloodbath.com <laughs> Biden is aiding and abetting an invasion instead of protecting Americans. He is prioritizing illegal aliens over U.S. citizens. So in this rally last night, he said, you know what? Hey, they, they said I was talking about a bloodbath. He said they actually took it out of context. And I was actually referring to the auto workers. But so long as we're there, so long as they're going to hit me for it. Let's talk about what it is. Yeah, it is a bloodbath. It's Biden's bloodbath. And it's because of our border situation and our crime levels have increased. And you know what? The long and the short of it is he's got the largest police unit in the country, ladies and gentlemen, endorsing him. Think about that. Let that sink in. It's like the media just continually underestimates him. The problem is we've become so divided in our society with this class of elites and have and have nots that they're so out of touch with how everyday people think and feel and the challenges that everyday people are up against that at every single turn donald trump outsmarts them and i believe he'll continue to do so because while they go to radio city music hall with their three musketeer presidential tour <sighs> and raise 25 or 26 million dollars so you can get your picture with these guys donald trump goes to a wake out on long island for a police officer officer diller who leaves behind a wife and a one-year-old child he goes there he pays his respects he pays off their mortgage he raises a little money through a charity and they give them some cash to be able to get through the next few months i mean this is very different is it not than the splashy Radio City Music Hall event complete with Stephen Colbert and Lizzo. It's very different. And so the more they hit them, the more a lot of everyday folks and not so everyday folks feel like he's the only solution. He's the only one that can help. And so that's what the media doesn't understand. I mean, they said this the other day, um, Chris Matthews, who, who I like, you know, he's kind of like an old school Democrat, but he's been sort of, <laughs> probably corrupted by a lot of this, but not everybody has. I mean, I, you know, I, I hope that there's still, I think he, he's still got some of that sort of blue collar esqueness about him. And he was trying to explain it on MSNBC the other day. And he's like, you know, I was in New Hampshire, my home state where I'm from lived um, my, my entire life really up in, until uh, I went away to school, but, um, and still spent a lot of time. And he was talking about the poor, poor, poor people in New Hampshire that didn't have anything and they looked at him almost like a messiah. And it's so shocking to him and so shocking to everybody else on that network. It's not shocking to me when everyone is willing to, excuse my French, screw you at every turn. And there's one guy, one guy only who's saying, this is not right and I'm gonna do something about it. You know what? You kind of feel like he's the only game in town. And so he's outsmarting them at their very own game and raising more money. Latest numbers just in from the RNC. And oh my goodness, Lara Trump putting on a stunning performance there. Take a look at this. $65.6 .6 million in the month of March alone. I mean, I think that Joe Biden had 70 something total. So they're knocking on his doorstep in one single month, ladies and gentlemen. Lara Trump killing it here. I mean, she comes in. We know she's serious. She said, you know what? I'm here to win. And I know she's there to win because she's a triathlon. And I've seen those pictures on Instagram, girl. Very nice woman. Very, very nice woman, as is her husband. But she is playing to win. And she's a fighter. And she's out there making the calls and raising the money and doing the TV and selling this message as well as making sure that the infrastructure goes in place so that you can get people registered to vote 
and that you can make sure that if they need to vote absentee, they do. And look, none of us like it. I get it. You know what? No other country does this. I was looking recently. Elon Musk actually tweeted this out. And he's like going through every country. I mean, even every banana republic in the world, they've, have to, they've had to stop those darn absentee ballots because there's too much room for who knows what. And so, yeah, I know we don't want it. I stand with you. I actually think it should be a national holiday. I can't believe that everybody has to go to work. This is like an easy one. I know you want every other holiday, visibility day and the, <laughs> this, that, and the other. But you need a holiday for voting. Everybody should be able to go in person to vote. In the interim, Lara's a realist, and she's going to make sure, I hope, that everything is put in place so that we have the right legal framework. And there's one state in particular, and if some of you guys are talking about Nebraska, yes, where some things have to be done. But she's on it and she's raising the money three or four times what they raised in the month of February alone. So go, Lara. That is just stunning. It's fantastic. I'm really, really happy to see it. But I'm not entirely surprised. Again, because this is everyday folks. I mean, people who can't afford it saying, you know what? $10, $20. I'm going to spend it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend this bit of money I have. And I'm going to help the guy that I think can help me. And then you get the people that maybe are willing to spend $500,000 because, you know, to them, what's $500,000 for a guy that can help them? And by help them, I, I'm talking sort of at a different level, right? <laughs> you know, because Biden hasn't really helped working Americans. When you look at median wages and you compare and contrast median wages for the first three years of the Biden administration versus the first three years of the Trump administration, what do you find? you find that Trump actually way outperformed him because median wages for everyday folks, they rose the most, adjusted for inflation even, <laughs> since oh, JFK. Like you could go all the way back to JFK to see numbers like this because policy matters, okay? Policy matters. Lower taxes, less regulation, a border. <gasps> Imagine that. Well, Donald Trump, um, he, he also is making it kind of easy. <laughs> I mean, I just, it's like low-hanging fruit, right? There's a Christian community in America that feels very ignored, and rightly so. In fact, even sort of, not just ignored, but shunned. I mean, think about how long it took for those churches to open up. You know, you could go everywhere. You could go to a bar, but you couldn't go to church. What the heck was that about? The, the deep state, the federal government, and Joe Biden have been aggressively, for whatever reason, and maybe they're not, let's, let's go out on a limb. Let's just say, you know what, they're not. Certainly the perception is, is that they are very anti-Christianity. And they're all for everything else. I mean, everything else. I mean, consider the blunder of Easter Sunday. They're going to say it's false information. They've already told us that. We listened to KJP tell us yesterday. You know what? It's false information to say that Easter Sunday is gender, transgender visibility day. Well, you know, you guys, you picked this when he came into office. You chose March 31st, fully knowing that just months before the election, you would have transgender visibility day happening on Easter Sunday. So you're either really stupid, which we're pretty sure of, or you did that for a reason. I think they did it for a reason because they think that this is a winning issue, which again, just proves their stupidity. Take a look at those poll numbers for Joe Biden. He's not winning. He's not winning on this, but you know what? Donald Trump out in Michigan saying to the people, you know what? We're going to have Christian visibility day. How about that, Drew? We got it. <laughs> oh boy! Well, we might, we might, we might. We get it. We get an earpiece so that Drew. I want Drew to start coming on the show because he's got good color that you should hear on all of these stories, ladies and gentlemen. And then he can just say no, no, or we can get a buzzer. Could you do that, Drew? Like, Arr! we don't have it anyway. I'll paraphrase. Donald Trump was in Michigan. And he did this great speech and he said, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have Christian Visibility Day. And I'm going to tell you something. He's doing what the left has just refused to do for so long. The left is not recognizing Christians. They're not giving them their due in any way, shape or form. They're really kind of 
pretty bad about how they treat Christians in America. We've seen it over and over again. Suddenly somebody comes along and says, hey, you know what? I recognize you. I like you. I've even got a Bible for you. <laughs> how about that? Anyway, really, really incredible stuff. I want to move on to another story right now. Um, we're getting an update on MAGA Firebrand that she is, Lauren Brophart. She is just out of the hospital. She's actually still in the hospital, but she is just out of surgery, ladies and gentlemen, breaking right now. She was rushed into surgery in Colorado earlier today. She has been diagnosed with a rare blood condition, a rare condition. She had a blood clot, and they engaged in surgery to remove that clot and subsequently diagnosed her with something called May Therner syndrome. It's a condition that disrupts blood flow in the body. Young woman, only 37 years old, she went to the UC Health Medical Center in the Rockies in Loveland, Colorado, after having some swelling in her upper left leg. According to her campaign, they issued a statement on this. And so when she went to the hospital, they gave her a CAT scan, and that was when the doctors found this blood clot. So they immediately rushed her into surgery, and they inserted a stent to address the congresswoman's symptoms. This report here coming to us from Fox News, I'll read to you. She was diagnosed with May Therner syndrome, also known as iliac vein compression syndrome. It is described by the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center as a rare vascular condition that affects a vein in the pelvis. It occurs when a nearby artery compresses the left iatic. I know I'm not saying that right. I <laughs> Uh, like I said, it's Wednesday, a, a vein. Um, it, it's a rare vascular condition that affects, I guess, a vein in the pelvis and it occupies or occurs when a nearby artery compresses that left vein, which brings blood from the pelvis and legs back up to the heart. The compression prevents blood from flowing properly, leading to narrowing and to scarring. And this is um, just a miracle that she she is she is okay because this is actually something that's pretty dangerous. She's resting right now. She is expected to make a full recovery. So wonderful news. There are no significant concerns regarding her long-term health. The campaign is saying diagnosis will not impact her ability to perform her duties as a congresswoman, her campaign is saying. So all about the job. They're all about the job. Uh, she is thanking the hospital there for their great care and providing some helpful insight into her diagnosis. Let me share with you her statement. She writes, I'm looking forward to making a full recovery and getting back to Congress to continue fighting for Colorado. But obviously an inc incredibly, incredibly scary situation. It's been known typically actually to affect women in this, in this particular age range. Women between the ages of 20 and 45 are most at risk and if you have previously given birth, obviously she has, you're, you're more at risk as well. So I was not familiar with this. Um, it, it's not clear exactly whether this may have been related in any way to dehydration, some of the travel and extended periods of sitting going back and forth, of course, between D.C. and Colorado, whether that may have contributed to any of those symptoms. But it's certainly possible. I mean, when you think about it and if you have a blood clot, obviously, if you're traveling and if you're dehydrated, these are risk factors that you have to take into consideration. But the fact that she's actually been diagnosed with this, of course, she'll have to be careful in the future. She is a mother of four. And as I said, 37 years old. So she's in that sort of sweet spot per the science that says 20 to 45 years old. If you have previously given birth, you are more likely to wind up with this condition. So that is um, obviously a concern. Uh, you know, look, she's, she's gearing up for a third term in Congress. And so we'll, we'll, see, uh, we'll see how she fares. I, I don't think this will have any bearing on her. In fact, in some ways, it may actually help her in that she may seem to be more of a, a vulnerable or, or sympathetic figure to people as they recognize the challenges that she is having, um, as anyone would with their health. So we wish her very, very well. Um, Look, I mean, health is just something that we have to all think about, right? Every single day, it's something that I put front and center. I try to get to the gym every day. I try to go for a walk. I try to eat healthy. But, you know, I always forget my fruits and vegetables, or at least the fruits, which is why I'm very happy that I have one of our sponsors on the show, 
these fruits and veggie capsules, capsules. I've been taking them for several months now. I feel great. You guys all think I look great. So, hey, I'll take it. I'll take compliments any day of the week. Call 1-800-246-8751 if you're interested in trying these. They're terrific. I mean, I get and and I'll tell you, my kid's music teacher called me the other day. Some of you guys have heard this story. So, sorry if I'm repeating myself, but he called me. He's like, oh my gosh, Trish, I was listening to your podcast. I'm like, oh, you were? That's great. I'm, I'm so happy. I didn't know you listened to my podcast. On Apple, by the way, where you can all get it. Make sure you subscribe so that it automatically downloads. It helps me a lot if you do that, by the way. It helps the algorithm for some reason. Um, so he calls me. He's like, this is fantastic. I love your podcast. And by the way, I love Balance of Nature. I've been taking them for years, so I can't get them as a new customer. <laughs> but anyway, if you're interested in becoming a new customer at Balance of Nature, just make sure you use my discount code because you get 35% off, which is a big deal, and you get free shipping. Go check out their website, balanceofnature.com. Balanceofnature.com. Type in discount code TRISH, T-R-I-S-H, or call them 1-800-246-8751. 800-246-8751. We have a lot of news. I mean, a lot of news. Because we got to talk did we gotta talk Disney. I mean, this is amazing. Amazing to me what's going down at Disney. I'd like to know when are people actually gonna start to think straight? I mean, we got the police union thinking straight. Out in Michigan, thank you very much. We got voters, clearly, everyday voters sort of thinking straight. I hope that lasts. And and I think, <laughs> you know, our gut instinct is usually the right instinct. I, t I say to people all the time, don't overthink it. Like, it's right there in front of your face. Don't overthink it. Usually your, your first sense of things is the right sense of things. But, you know, lately with all this DEI nonsense and this ESG nonsense, everybody's overthinking everything. And suddenly, oh, I don't know, profits don't matter anymore. The films you make, who cares? We'll lose a billion plus dollars on these Disney films. Who cares, right? Because, oh, we were diverse. You get the University of Texas just getting rid of its whole DEI department. Right? Because d during March 2020, when nobody had anything better to do, talk about overthinking things. That's when they came up with defund the police and you had the Black Lives Matter movement taking on all kinds of power, right? Power. For what? So that they could force every corporation to be more focused on DEI than they were on profits. What do you think that led to? None other than stupid decisions, stupid marketing decisions like Dylan Mulvaney. Stupid decision, okay? Okay. Nothing against Dylan. Dylan can be Dylan. But if I am, if I am Bud Light and my biggest customer happens to be those fratty guys that drink my Bud Light, do you think I want to alienate them by poo-pooing all over them? In a podcast, by the way, the head of marketing did. Well, simultaneously, signing up Dylan? That makes no sense. And so... I mention this because investors are losing their way. Here's UT finally coming back to earth here. Oh goodness, we're challenging my eyesight here. I'm gonna have to move in, move in close. I didn't print this out. I've been looking at it, but um, UT community soon after the passage. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. Look at that. Soon after the passage last year of Senate Bill 17, which prohibits many activities around diversity prohibits many activities around diversity, equity, and inclusion. The university embarked on a multi-phase process to review campus portfolios and, and or redesign the policies, programs, trainings, and roles affected by the new law. Our initial focus was to ensure that we require changes by SB 17's January 1st effective date, blah, 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 bureaucratic nonsense. Anyway, the long and the short of it is they're getting rid of their DEI office and all those professors, here we go. All those professors, they were like somehow reassigned with these plum jobs where they no longer had to teach, but they just had to focus on, are we diverse and inclusive and equitable enough? Well, they say the money is actually going to be re-diverted and redeployed to support teaching. Imagine that. You actually at UT want to actually have the money go back to teaching and to research. 
Here we go. One, two, three, four paragraphs in. As part of this reallocation, associate and assistant deans who were formerly focused on DEI will return to their full-time faculty positions, the positions that provided support for those associate and assistant deans, and a number of small staff roles across campus that were formerly focused on DEI will no longer be funded, ladies and gentlemen, because you know what? They're realizing that this has nothing to do with education. Just like some companies are realizing it has nothing to do with profitability, which is why... I started with my longtime, very, very dear friend, Rob Horton, 76 Research. 76 Research is a project that I've wanted to do for a really, really long time. And Rob has been an investor on Wall Street, running billions of dollars for some 25 years. And both he and I were coming at this from different angles, right? I'm in the media business. I'm looking at how manufactured sort of the idea of what you should invest in is and how top down it is and how you got BlackRock with, you know, Larry Fink. I like him. Nice guy. He's come on my show plenty of times. But, you know, suddenly he was looking at ESG like a, a panacea for how to invest. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's just not that hard, right? Like, it's simple, people. You just need good companies with good ideas, people that work hard and generate profits. And what do you know? But everybody overthought it. And Rob was in the same situation from the investing perspective. And so we were always saying, like, how do we together help people invest in the right things for the right reasons for the right amount of time? which is long-term, right? You always benefit from being in the markets long-term. I'm not talking about getting in and out. You know, if, if you do that, you know, it's, it's so difficult to time the market. You, you should have at least a five to seven year time horizon and you should be looking at good, solid companies. And when those good, solid companies become available and they have businesses that you believe in that will be inflation protected, that will grow and generate income for you one day, so you're not always working for a living, then you know what? That's a worthwhile investment. So Ram and I talked a lot about this. I mean, this kind of research is really expensive on Wall Street. I mean, you're going to pay at least $10,000 in all seriousness for research like this. And I said to him, you know what? I have so many people that are craving this and it's not getting to them. It's going to the institutions because the institutions can afford it. But what if we're doing research that is institutional level, and frankly, I'd say even better because we actually speak English, <laughs> and, and, and on the rare chance that he writes something, I'm like, hey, hey, Rob, we get it, we, we get it, we're going to make it English, okay? We want everybody to understand it. We're not, we're not, this is not a B2B thing, okay? This is a us to you thing. We want you to understand it. We want you to make the right decisions, and I want you to be invested in the right stuff for the future. So our idea was, okay, unlike these little boutique places that are selling their fancy research to institutions, what if we go mass market? What if I take it all to you, directly to you, and I offer it inexpensively because I don't have to charge you 10000 because I get that many of you, <laughs> right? That's a whole different ballgame. It actually changes the industry in, in ways that are sort of, I think, inconceivable to a lot of people. Threatening, maybe, to a lot of people. But I want you to be part of this. So go to 76research.com right now. I'm going to put it in. If you've already signed up, great. If you haven't, make sure you do. H-T-T-P-S, I have to say this out loud because I cannot talk and type at the same time, 76research.com. Sign up. Sign up for it. Get our model portfolios. Get the 76 report. Make sure that you know what's going on in your financial future. Because I'll tell you, you know, Disney, Bud, AB InBev, there's plenty of companies. Like, sometimes it's just so freaking obvious. I think about the darn SPR. In April of 2020, oil's trading at 20 bucks. 20 bucks a barrel. So what does Trump do? He goes and fills the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Because, well, oil's 20 bucks. When do you think that's going to happen again? 
Next time you have a, a COVID event, I guess. He goes and fills the SPR. And oh my goodness, at MSNBC, were they furious? Everybody's screaming. New York Times is screaming. Oh my gosh, he's just doing a favor for his oil friends. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me, people. He just filled up the SPR at a really cheap level. Well, guess what? Joe Biden comes into office. And what does he do? He taps the SPR. He takes the oil that Trump bought at $20 a barrel because now it's going for like 110 <laughs> And he goes and he uses it. And I'm like, gee, I think you should have sent maybe a little thank you note to 45 for that one. But of course that didn't happen. In other words, that's when you buy oil <laughs> for the long haul, right? That's when you buy the oil companies for the long haul. But if you're on Wall Street and say you're running your portfolio, say you're a teacher or a firefighter or a police officer, you got some fancy schmancy Wall Street firm, probably BlackRock, running your money. They're not going to invest in oil. They're not going to invest in an energy company because they're going to say, no, it's not ESG friendly enough. Or we're not going to invest in this one because it's not ESG friendly or it's not DEI friendly enough. So what did Disney do? Disney said, oh, we can be super DEI. We can be really DEI. We can have all these different remakes and we can change the stories and just put in black people for white people or transgenders for what would have been heterosexuals or you know this, that, and the other. So they had no new ideas. They just kept coming through with sequel after sequel after sequel and along the way really ticking everybody off. I mean, Snow White is the latest example. And so that doesn't work. Their share price went down to, I don't know, 86, $87. Don would know this off the top of his head. It's done better since then, only because I think of the pressure from Nelson Peltz. I'm just checking where shares ended the day. But I think what's sad here is that there is a missed opportunity, a huge missed opportunity, because I think Nelson Peltz could have done so much good for this company. And sure enough, you know what? Investors are with me. Take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. The stock trading down more than 3% on the day, a loss of $3.84 a share at $118.98. The only reason it's even at 118, I kid you not, is because Nelson Peltz was agitating and saying, look, you guys got to get your act together. He was competing for two board seats and they wanted to make sure that he would have no chance in H-E-double-L -L to get them. He got 31% of the votes cast in his bid to become a director there at Disney. Disney's entire slate of nominees won, leaving directors friendly to CEO Bob Iger on the board. Bob wants his friends on the board. Here is the headline in Daily Mail. The Disney King, CEO Bob Iger, wins in battle against activist Nelson Peltz. Landslide victory for current board in crucial vote. Let me just tell you how hard it is for someone like Nelson Peltz to come out. I mean, I'm not like, this is no violin story. This is, this is what he does for a living. But it's hard to do, right? It's hard to do. It's hard to win these proxy votes because you've got the odds stacked against you. After all, Bob has all his friends there. And all the investing groups like T. Rowe Price and BlackRock, they were like, okay, we're, we're with Bob, right? We're, we're Bob's you know, team. So Bob said, hey, I got a new CEO, Dana Weldon. She's waiting in the wings. We're going to make sure that happens. So don't worry about succession. And hey, we're going to get things back on track, right? We already like temporarily canceled Snow White. And we get some other things that we can fix and we'll come up with better entertainment. So he's like selling this idea to investors and saying Nelson can't do it. Well, Nelson, who said, look, I don't have any experience in media, but like, do I really have to have an all-female cast? I like women and everything, but, you know, do I really have to not have an all-female cast for this story? Or does it have to be an all-black cast or an all-this cast or this? In other words, he's like, stop, right, with the PC nonsense. And so just the fact that he was there saying, hey, guys, get your act together, it caused Bob to go out and get a new CFO, the guy who used to work at Pepsi, I think, Coke or Pepsi, <laughs> Don, you better tell me if I'm right on that one. It was, it was one, I think it was Pepsi. Anyways, he brings in the new, the new um, CFO and he's like suddenly getting a little bit more concerned and he's suddenly maybe a little bit more interested in having a succession plan. Dana is like the chosen one. She used to work at Fox actually. I don't necessarily consider that a feather in her cap, but he's got to figure out a way to hemorrhage all this bleeding. I mean, here's an article from Forbes, and we're talking about 
the four flops of 2003 that cost Disney a billion dollars, right? So all of this is starting to add up, accumulated with this shareholder vote where Nelson was like, I need board seats. And Bob's like, no, you don't. And what was amazing to me was the fact that CalPERS, this is the retirement agency, that, or the retirement fund, I should say, the management fund for the teachers and firefighters and police officers in the state of California, all the government bureaucrats, you would think that, you know, it's California, they would be as woke as could be, and they'd be like, oh, we can't possibly have Nelson Pelts around here. No, no. Um, they actually were all for Pelts. So that was a big wake-up call. And I think this entire ordeal has been a wake-up call for Bob Iger and for Disney. Now, what they do with it, the ball is now in their court. Iger won. So where does he take his company? Can he do anything? What do you do with a company that's been polluted like this one has with the woke mind virus? It's kind of a challenging thing because if the, uh, the team, so to speak, the staff, if they're not with you and you don't have good leadership that can help see them through this, if they're all wokey, woke, woke, then you're not going to be able to write the ship. You're not going to be able to turn this one around. I'm just looking at at some of the comments here from I, I Leslie, I see you are no fan <laughs> of Higer. I'm just trying to see. I saw some stuff in here from Don as well, who said um, he, he, he really is not a fan of this stock. And, and it had gotten down to what was it? 80 something a share. And it's rallied since then, but only because of Nelson, I'm telling you. And so now the question becomes, if Nelson's not there pounding the table saying, listen, you got to do a better job. You got to be less woke. You got to get rid of these bloated assets like, hey, The View and ABC News. Sell it. Sell it to a private equity shop or better yet, Nexstar, News Nation. I like that network. I get some friends over there. I go on Leland's show. News Nation. Take ABC News and News Nation. And at least then News Nation is trying to be measured and different maybe you know and you get rid of whoopee and the rest of them that are costing you a lot of money and you'll be better off but can they do it i don't know i do think Iger wants to sell abc he wants to sell espn too look tv's dead tv is dead ladies and gentlemen i say that with great pride having worked 20 some odd years in it i love this new medium i mean at first my parents were like wait what are you doing <laughs> my husband's like what are you doing YouTube and I'm a yeah and it's great and I love it and it's new and it's different and I have a direct connection like to all of you and we've been growing and growing and growing I'm looking at these numbers and it's crazy like we're actually getting numbers that are very similar to what I get over on Fox Business now granted it was Fox Business and you know they didn't have the same we didn't have the same tune in I like to think that we were doing very well I actually had in all seriousness the best ratings ever at 8 p.m at Fox Business, the best they had ever had in the history, the 20 year history, if it had been, it might've been 10 years, forgive me. Maybe Fox was around 20 years, but in the history of the network, I was getting the best ratings they ever had, but you know, <laughs> they weren't Tucker ratings because that was the, the main ship. And we were like the red headed stepchild over, over there in the corner, but Hey, it's okay. I, I'm used to, <laughs> I've always been in business news. So I've always had a, a smaller audience but a dedicated and a loyal audience and a wonderful audience, a smart audience. I say that, a kind audience. So I love you guys. I love my audience. I've always loved my audience and we're growing this audience. So it's thanks to your sharing and it's thanks to this new medium and the technological changes that enable me to have a control room where Drew is down south and for me to be up here in the Northeast and us to be able to do this together. So it's absolutely wonderful and I'm super excited about it. But I'll tell you, Disney is, uh, is not in the best shape, but they've gotten the wake up call they need. And I think that's important. Did we see those vote Disney's? Did you see those, Drew? I think I texted you some. Yeah, see, he's got some. Vote today. This is what they did. It's so hard to win one of these proxy fights because you've got the company controlling everything and they spent a ton of money on this. It's like a campaign, for goodness sakes. And they were telling all the Disney shareholders, 
40% of shares are held by individuals, by the way. Vote, 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 vote for Disney. And then they even showed you how to vote. This was one, vote today. And then look at this. They showed you how to cast your ballot. Oh my gosh, it's like the Democrats. <laughs> vote, vote, vote. Here you go. This is how you do it. Here, let's just fill it out for you. There you go. <laughs> oh my goodness. And granted, it's not a political race, but um, hmm. Mary Barr is on there you know, the car company lady. Um, she's really sort of the only, James Gorman's a big deal. He's on there. Uh, Morgan Stanley, of course, it, you know, they, they've got a powerful board, but Nelson, James Russell, who used to work at the company, Russell, uh, he tried to get on there and then Blackwell had some nominee. It just wasn't happening. Was not happening. So cheers, Nelson. Thanks for fighting the good fight. I hope you're still going to stick around in some way, shape, or form. Maybe, maybe not. If you bought in at 80, guess what? You've made money, so maybe you call it a day. I hope you recover some of your costs from trying to launch this battle. I'm going to see if I can get Rob on the show tomorrow because he can talk to us about that. He's been through this. He's actually launched some of these things himself. Um, he's won some. He knows what it's like to, to be Disney and to be Pelts. So maybe he'll come on. He can kind of walk us through and explain it. But listen as long as these companies are on this sort of woke train, they're going to be lost. I mean, it's, it's, you know what? It's a good opportunity for me to tell you about JCN, my friends over at JCN. Remember Alfredo, he came on Alfredo Ortiz. We're going to get him back on the show too, because JCN, these guys are great guys. They, they care about all of these issues. We're talking about Disney. It's a huge company, right? But they care about it on an individual scale because it's not just big companies. It's the little ones too. It's the little businesses all across America that are facing this onslaught. I mean, you think about what's going on in New York City right now with the crime. We talked about that yesterday. Two good videos that you got to go watch from yesterday on that. With finally, you know, the mayors of D.C. and the mayor of New York City coming out and saying, yeah, this is an issue. It's an issue. Yeah, we're recognizing it. And they get all kinds of wild reasons for why it's happening. And then you get the D.C. mayor trying to pretend like it's getting better. Well, you know, for small businesses, they know the reality of this and it's not getting better. And so they need a secure community in order to be operating their stores. Duh, right? You can't have everybody coming and stealing and like, like it's nothing. So Job Creators Network is fighting this battle. They are out there. They are seeking talent. They want, it's like, how do I describe this? It's kind of like, you know, the, the Chamber of Commerce, but like the more conservative version of the Chamber of Commerce, shall we say, between you and me. So they're out there. They've got groups in communities all across the country that you can join, you can network. If you're kind of a good presenter and you're fiery and you care about this stuff and you want to do more, they will help you to help be sort of a, a spokesperson for capitalism, for business. And they do this all gratis. So, you know, nothing out of, out of your pocket to do this, but consider joining. Join jcn.com. And uh, you're welcome to use my name, of course. You can tell them I sent you. This stuff is important right now. The wokest of the woke, Lizzo. You know, I got some bad news for all of you on her. <laughs> um, the other day, she told us she was quitting. Mm -hmm. She came out with this big Instagram post. It was like less than 24 hours after she had done that big event at Radio City Music Hall with the four three-mer, three musketeers, three former presidents of the United States. And she posted this thing and said, I quit. It was like this big, long blah from Lizzo be eating. Yeah, that's her Instagram handle. I had to like triple check it because, you know, it's me. I'm not really into Lizzo. <laughs> I saw the headlines. I went and, you know, good journalist that I am. I'm like, okay, so I'm going to go and, and get the original. Uh, can this be the original? Is this really her handle? Well, of course it is. <laughs> How shall we say? Of course it is. I'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet. All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little better than how I found it. <laughs> but I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views. Being the butt of the joke every single time because of how I look, my character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. I didn't sign up for this SHI, you know what? I quit, she said. Well, hey, you know what, lady? You did sign up for it. You did sign up for it the minute you decided to go in the public eye. I'm sorry. I know it's not fun. I know it's not pretty. I wouldn't encourage most people to actually go into the public eye. You know, if I had to do it all over again, I probably still would have done this. <laughs> but... I would tell anybody, and I do tell people, I'm like, careful, 
especially nowadays. Careful, you have to know what you're signing up for. And you mean to tell me you're going to collect millions and millions and millions of dollars and not be a little willing to deal with some of the punches that come your way, Lizzo? You know, you can't be that fragile, girl. You just can't. Apparently, she spent the weekend thinking about it when she's back for the win. I told you I had some bad news, right? Bad, bad news. Watch. I want to make this video because I just need to clarify. When I say I quit... I mean, I quit giving any negative energy attention. What I'm not going to quit is the joy of my life, which is making music, which is connecting to people. Because I know I'm not alone. In no way, shape, or form am I the only person who is experiencing that negative voice that seems to be louder than the positive. If I can just give one person the inspiration or motivation to stand up for themselves and say they quit letting negative people win, negative comments win, then I've done even more than I could have hoped for. With that being said, I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm gonna keep being me. Once again, I just wanna say thank you. The love that I've received <laughs> Whew. means more. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I had to look at her. <laughs> you know, you know, hey, she must be a great singer, right? There, there's got to be something there. I don't know, because uh, you got to be able to sing, I guess, if you're, you know, parading around in a swimsuit like that. She's clearly not on her balance of nature, okay, ladies and gentlemen? Good plug for Balance of Nature right here. 35% off. <laughs> In all seriousness, you do need your fruits and veggies, and she does too. Maybe tell her. Balance of Nature, 1-800-246-8751. Discount code Trish. Lizzo, take it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so that was just one big giant publicity stunt, right? I mean, that's all that was. I knew it. I know the type. I really know the type. Like I've, I've worked in television where you have a lot of egos. I worked in opera, for goodness sakes, where you definitely have a lot of egos. I mean, you don't think that the word prima donna was just, you know, out of thin air. <laughs> okay. That's, that's the first lady of the opera, the soprano, who often looks like that. <laughs> okay. Like there's a lot of ego there, shall we say. So knowing that, seeing her release on Friday, I thought, oh my goodness, this woman is annoyed. She's annoyed that Stephen Colbert and the Three Musketeers at Radio City Music Hall, Biden, Obama, and Clinton, got more time in the media, more attention in the media, more headlines than she did. It was pretty simple. So she thought, I'll shock them all with this. I'll quit on Friday and I'll be back by Wednesday. And then I will get out of that news cycle the whole Easter weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then I'll come back and I'll do this big thing. And I'll say, I didn't mean that. I just meant that I quit the negativity. And I did this all to inspire you and continue making music because that's what satisfies my soul. <laughs> Maybe she was annoyed that Diddy was getting all the headlines. Who knows? And there's a lot of ego there, a lot. And um, she's dealing with some lawsuits of her own, I understand. We'll see. We'll probably learn more soon anyway it is good to have you here it is really good to see you all i just want to go out and say hi to some of you folks um so many of you joined as team members that's awesome so many of you are now on you are now on uh 76 research you know this last report from 70 report was 76 report was absolutely absolutely positively fantastic so if you have not gotten it you know i'm just I don't know if I can do this. Rob, can I do this? Like, I don't know if he's watching or not, but maybe I just, okay, I'm going to take a chance. Go and um, we'll, we'll, we'll find a way to get it to you. If you message me at Trish Regan at 76research.com, just send me a message and I will find a way if we can. We, if we get thousands, <laughs> we'll see. I have to be careful what I do. <laughs> he's going to say, what did you do? What did you do? But I just want to find a way to share this with you guys. 
um, even if not the, you know, the expensive stuff, uh, which I don't think is expensive, really. I mean, for what you're getting, it's just such enormous value. But let me at least try to get you whatever free stuff we can get you. So, um, and maybe we can do one of the reports. I don't know. I have to talk to Rob about that. But you can, you know, shoot me a note. Trish Regan at 76research.com. And we'll... We'll see if I can pull some strings, okay? I am co-founder after all, right? And I will see you back here tomorrow. Have a terrific evening, everyone. Be on the lookout. we got a whole lot more coming your way. Lots and lots and lots of clips. Our prayers go Lauren Bopert. We really hope, uh, regardless of what you think about her politically, you know what? For anybody to be in this situation, it's got to be awful. And she's got kids and uh, four of them. In fact, uh, we, we wish her and her whole family the very best. I will see you tomorrow. Live free or die. Remember.